G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring. In today's video, I wanna show you guys my new tinny. I'm totally new to boating, um, so this has been a massive learning curve for me already, but we absolutely love the idea of taking a boat with us on our travels. Uh, we live in Western Australia, uh, and we've got some of the best coastline in the world, so it just makes sense for us. For us traveling as a family, a big trailered boat was just not practical, so I started looking at rooftop tinnies, um, roof toppers, car toppers, whatever you wanna call them. Originally, because my rig is so heavy, I was thinking I'd go something as light and as small as possible. So I was looking at a three to 3.5 meter tinny with a nine to 15 horsepower uh, two stroke outboard. But after doing a heap of thinking on it, research and talking to people who have traveled with tinnies before, I decided I'd want something bigger for a few reasons. Uh, firstly, we want to be able to launch it off the beach and do some inshore fishing. This means I need a decent amount of freeboard. Freeboard is how much of the hull sticks out of the water. A bigger boat with more freeboard is going to behave better in the chop. And I also want to be able to take Tiff and Chloe with me. So again, I'm looking at something bigger so it's more stable and more safe. Finally, a lot of the coastline and the river systems across the top end of Australia, where I want to be able to take this thing, is home to some pretty big crocs. So a bigger, stable boat with higher sides makes a lot of sense all around. So to be able to stick a tinny on the roof of the vehicle, I've had to keep in mind the, the, the total weight of the thing. Is my roof rack or my canopy going to be capable of carrying that weight? I've got to consider how wide, uh, how long, and how tall the thing is. I don't want massive overhang. Luckily for me, this sort of all came together while I was already building my canopy. Um, those videos are coming up. So I was able to choose a hull that ticked all of those boxes and then build the canopy to suit the hull. So the canopies had to be strong enough to handle all that weight, um, but light enough to not eat into, the, into my already limited GVM on the vehicle. So I think I've got that all right, but I haven't put it all together yet. Um, when it's all together, it'll go over the way bridge and I'll share all that information with you guys. But it's, it's looking promising. I think I'm gonna be able to do it. Now, originally I really had my heart set on a 3.8 CJ Angler as the hull. Uh, Tiff's old man, Brian, my father-in-law, he's had one as a rooftopper for years and it really just ticked all the boxes. So I was confident that that was gonna be a, a good move for us. However, like many things at the moment with COVID, the secondhand market has gone absolutely mental. And even getting one new was stupidly difficult. So CJ dealers in Western Australia, um, none of them had one on the floor. Uh, and they told me that it was gonna be a thousand dollars freight to be able to get one on top of the price of the hull, obviously. And then they couldn't give me a firm date on when it would be. They were saying six months or more. So I was looking at four to four and a half grand. Could have been six months to a year until I get one. So back to the drawing board. Um, one thing I noticed trying to find the right hull is that it's really difficult to compare them. Uh, they all measure them slightly differently. Uh, specifically, some give you the depth measurements, some give you the side measurements, and then some give you a freeboard measurement. Where they measure them from is all different. Um, so yeah, I found that really difficult to compare. I think depth is from the bottom of the V, and then if you had, if you had a beam across here, it's from the bottom of the V to there. I don't know what side, I don't know. Anyway, it was really difficult. Unless you actually go look at them all in person and you bring a tape measure, you can run over them. It's really hard. So anyway, long story short, I settled on this. It's a Stesco Squire 389. As you'd imagine, it's 3.89 meters long. The beam or the width is 1670. Um, and on their website, they say 880 mil deep. But if you're wondering from gunnel to chime, if you want to compare it, it is around 630. That's what I wanted, higher side, so it was safer and more stable in the water. So I bought this thing from Shivers Marine in Bibra Lake as a bare bones, basic empty hull for around 3,500 bucks. It came with a floor already in it, which is really nice. And the floor is probably constructed better and lighter than I would have been able to do it at home myself, um, not having access to a, a MIG. They were also good enough to move the handle on the front for me. Came with the handle across the nose there, they've moved it to the side for me. So empty hull came in at 110 kilos, which is definitely the upper end of the weight um, scale for car toppers. However, it is bigger than most, um, and it also includes the full floor that's the whole way through it. And also to note is that it's constructed out of two mil uh, aluminium, whereas most of the ones I was looking at were 1.6. So this hull's got a max outboard size of 25 horsepower. Uh, as you can see, I went with a brand new 20 horsepower Honda, which was around $4,000. I got that from Dingy World in Como. I seriously considered waiting for a secondhand 15 horsepower two-stroke to pop up. Um, they're a lot lighter, uh, they make similar sort of power, and obviously 
well, they're normally a bit cheaper. However, like I said, with COVID, the market's a little bit mental for secondhand stuff. But anyway, I end up getting the brand new four stroke because I thought it's more, I'm more likely to be able to get Tiff and Chloe out on it if it's quieter, um, it's not as smoky, and also it should be more reliable. So this Honda BF20 is the pull start model and it's manual tilt. There is an electric start model uh, with electric tilt, but it's a fair bit heavier and then it would have required a starter battery as well. Um, which again is more crap, more weight that I just don't need. So this model, um, Honda, it comes in at 45 kilos. I am just able to pick it up and move it around myself pretty comfortably. Um, I wouldn't want to go any heavier, I'd start struggling. Um, Tiff would have no chance moving that thing, so I've got to be able to do it myself. So if you're new to all of this like me and you're interested, uh, maybe you're in the market for getting your first roof topper as well, Bear Hull, 3500, motor around $4,000 brings you up to seven and a half grand, which doesn't sound like too much, um, but it just doesn't stop there. Then you've got all your safety gear. Um, you've got life jackets, flares, EPIRB. There's another thousand bucks just there. Um, sounder, 500 to $1,000 for a pretty average one, I think. Um, lots of them were two or three grand. Then you've got, you've got to get a license if you've not had one before. So I had to sit a test, it was about 300 bucks, I think it cost me. Uh, and then you've got to register everything, the, the um, hull itself, the trailer, uh, and then the motor was registered to the trailer, I believe. I think I had to give them all that info. So for me, um, this whole thing from go to woe is probably gonna cost me around 13 grand, um, but I'll be able to give you a firm figure for what it all costs me when I finish it uh, in a later video. I've still got a fair bit to go on this. Righto, anyway, on that note, I'll show you what I've done so far. Fitting these rod holders, but before I um, chose what size hole saw to use, I did a couple of test holes just to make sure it fit well, and then I went for the one I was happy with. <clears throat> right, let's see how we go. So I'll finish off these rod holders. I'm gonna do another two on the front. Then I've got to fix these buttons on for these um, cushions I found. So I went to BCF and had a look at there. They do these blue vinyl cushions similar to this, but they're only 300 mil wide. And this hull's got 400 mil wide seats. So I had to order some of these online. Um, they're by Ocean South Australia. And yeah, they're 400 mil wide, 1200 mil long. And they've got these pockets, those mesh ones on the sides if they're tinny. So that suits me. So all this will be missing in the end is a kegerator. Maybe. Hmm. This is all, all new to me. I've never had a tinny before, so I had to do quite a bit of research about what to buy and I don't want to overcomplicate it, but I want it to be functional and, and useful, everything I do. So another two rod holders in the front gives me four in total, one in each corner. They're all angled out. Listen, this is my first tinny, so I'm hoping I'm doing this stuff right. So I'll fit these um, seat cover, these seats now. These are um, a vinyl 50 mil foam with a vinyl cover. Um, to fix them down, they come with press studs, but they didn't come with the, um, the other end of the stud. So I've had to buy them separately. So I'll fit them now. And um, that shouldn't, shouldn't take too long. So I've just measured evenly off the sides. Cool, same on the other side. So this is a ram mount. Uh, it's all cast alloy by the feel of it. I'm gonna stick it there. And then I should be able to swivel it in whatever direction, depending on where I'm fishing out of the tinny. And 
I got a seven inch low rance hook, fish finder. Sit on there. That was a, this is a mid range job. I think it was about 800 bucks. And the ram mount itself was about 150. But I just wanted to, I was originally gonna make something with some alloy bracket and stuff, but I just wanted something easier. Um, I'd rather just spend the money and do it right first time. So let's drill some holes. Oh, I just drew on my chair. Just gonna give it these holes a little bit of a deburr. On the outside, if you don't know how to do that, you get a bigger drill bit. That's all it takes. Just a little smear of silicon around the hole. All the fixings I'm using are stainless steel, obviously, so it doesn't um, rust or react with the aluminium. And for for the uh, outside, I'm going to have these little round round bolts so that I don't catch my hands or anything on the outside. That's the plan. I'll just get my grinder and just nick the top of the, the bottom of those um, bolts off so this can spin the whole way. Cool, so something like that while I'm driving I think. And then if I'm fishing up the front, I can swivel it around. Can move it right out of the way if I'm fishing out the side. Ah, hate it when that happens. Can be looking at fish, grabbing bait off the side, hooking monsters. So I just need to figure out what I'm going to do with the wiring. That's what I got. Low rant, seven inch, hook reveal, triple shot. I don't know anything about these, but the BCF dude told me that this is mid range, best sort of thing at the time for under a grand, so we'll see. I'm happy with that. It's good. Obviously, when it's going to be on the car, upside down. This will be stowed away and I've made sure that the height of that arm is, is lower than the gunnel so it's not going to get in the way sliding on and off. So I wasn't too sure how I was going to power this um, fish finder sounder. I didn't really want to put a battery in here because um, to charge it off the engine, the engine has got, this has got an alternator and it can charge a battery but it'll only charge a lead acid battery and they're quite heavy. So I looked at like um, scooter batteries and stuff like that, but they're all quite heavy uh, and I didn't want to have to take an extra thing. So I've already got this little all spark lithium jump pack, which starts my car and, and I can run stuff as well. Like we charge our phones and that off it. Bloody hell, that plane's loud. So I've soldered up a little cable to run off the DC output. So I should be able to get four or five hours running this sounder at, uh, with the screen as bright as it goes if I've done my calculations correctly. I like having two uses for an item. So I'm not actually taking anything extra. That's really good. Saves on weight, saves on space. And I can recharge this thing off 240 volt, um, but more than likely while we're traveling, I'm just gonna charge it off cigarette plug or a USB plug in the back of the canopy. So that'll work nicely. Don't know where I'll put it yet. 
I might just stow it in one of these pockets. So these are about 180 bucks from Off-Road Living. I've had mine for a couple of years. Um, I've got a discount code for anything, AllSpark. That's the same uh, mob that I buy my lithium batteries through. So in the description, I'll put my discount code if you want to have a look at getting one. Like I said, I've still got heaps to do. Um, next episode, I'll show you the trailer. It's seriously cool. <laughs> I know that sounds boring, an episode about a trailer, but this thing's pretty unique. Um, so I'll show you that. A few of you will already have recognized what it is, I think. It weighs bugger all, it's collapsible down to pretty much nothing. Uh, it'll fit inside my canopy. Uh, yeah, it weighs nothing and it's still uh, registered. It's all aluminium. Yeah, it's really cool. So I'll, tell you, I'll show you that and I'll tell you about it later. And then I think we'll get this thing in the water. Um, none of it's been in the water yet. The motor hasn't even started yet. Um, so we'll take it for a little test because I have got a trip I'm planning to use this for in a few weeks time. So I need to get familiar with it, comfortable with it. I might have to stuff around with weight distribution. I've got to mount the transducer for the sounder. Um, so I need to know where the water line is, stuff like that. Anywho, so I'll take you with me and we'll get it in the water. So I think I'll wrap this thing up here. Thanks for watching. Consider liking the video and subscribing if you want to. Otherwise, don't. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.